to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Insist and ensure that everyone around you gets to listen to this message. At the end of the message, you will know why. Can we ask the Lord to visit us and grant us encounters by his word? Lift your voice in one minute. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Speak to us. Someone is praying. Although it's following by way of television, by way of the internet, participate in the prayer. The Lord is giving us visitations that last. Someone is praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Grant us revelation by your spirit. Let it set our hearts on fire indeed. For in Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated. God bless you again. Pastor Ben, sir, thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. I celebrate you and your dear wife. And we thank the Lord for this great miracle over the family. In the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 31 i'm teaching on the mercy of god the mercy of god it says for the lord thy god is a merciful god he will not forsake thee neither destroy thee nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them i'll read it one more time for the lord thy god is a merciful god he will not forsake thee neither destroy thee nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Wonderful, merciful. Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. For you are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. I took out time last year to study extensively the subject of the mercy of God because I discovered that even though it is a topic and a subject that is widely talked about across the body of Christ, in truth, 
not many people have taken the time to doctrinally study the concept of mercy and because we have not taken the time to study it um, not many people have been able to truly receive the blessings and the benefit that comes from this deep and powerful spiritual concept I've heard preachers preach on the mercy of God the the average believer just has an idea that the mercy of God whatever it is is an advantage and that is enough for reception Lord whatever that mercy is we know it helps and so I receive it and there cannot be proper reception in ignorance hallelujah and so I took out time to study extensively the whole idea of the mercy of God and I have by the privilege of God's grace I have taught on the mercy of God for many years but I was surprised myself when I began to study the subject of mercy I was I was exposed to the the level of ignorance and how much I did not know about the mercy of God so I'm hoping that God would grant grace that um, within the time we'll have you be a compression of many thoughts but I'm praying that God will grant us grace because someone's life truly is about to change liberty is connected to knowledge and you shall know the truth and the truth that you know not the one available the one you know sustains capacity to make you free you shall know the truth there is a relationship between knowledge and liberty hallelujah praise the lord in my study on the subject of mercy i discovered that there are four layers there are four layers that um, you must understand four layers of thoughts that if you do not understand it makes um, appreciating and receiving the mercy of God very difficult number one the first thing you have to understand in order to appreciate the subject of mercy is the nature and the character of God this is the first thing you have to understand it is impossible to truly understand the mercy of God if you do not understand the nature and the character of God there is something about God that you must know to understand mercy. Number two, the second thing you need to know, the second layer of our approach to this subject would be the nature and the character of man. You have to know something about the intrinsic frame of man to necessitate mercy. If there are there are certain things if you do not know about man you will wonder why God is so insistent on ensuring that man becomes a recipient of his mercy there is something about the nature and the character of God we need to learn number two there is something about the nature and the character of man number three the third thing we have to understand is the spiritual system for administering mercy. As powerful as mercy is, it is not administered randomly. There, there is a spiritual protocol. That means there are people as cheap and as free as mercy is. There are people who will never be able to be recipients of mercy. Are we learning already? A quick recap number one the nature and the character of god you have that down number two the nature and the character of man number three the spiritual system for administering mercy and then finally we now look at the blessings and the benefits of mercy if you approach your subject of mercy from this angle i guarantee you that you will understand the mercy of god in a way that you may have never seen grant us understanding in the name of Jesus the nature of God the Bible tells us a number of things about God remember principally the way we know God is through scripture 
I've done teachings along that line. There are four ways the Bible allows believers to know God. In learning and knowing God, um, there are only four platforms given in scripture. Number one itself is scripture. The first way we learn God is through scripture. The second way we know God is through his names. The different dimensions of God are captured in his names. So as you study the names of God, they expose you to the multifaceted dimensions of God. Are we together? The third way that we know God is by studying the man, Jesus. The Bible calls him, according to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, the express image of the invisible God. So that invisible God who was full of mystery and mysticism, the prophets gave us glimpses of this deity. Jesus came among the many reasons why Jesus came to the earth. It was not only to die. Jesus came as a manuscript. He came as a correction to our perception about God. Because until he appeared, nobody could know God accurately. The prophets only had types and shadows. They could only, they could only um, um, give us as far as their knowledge could give. Jesus came as perfect theology and explanation of God. So that anything we were in confusion about as to the nature of God, we would verify using the person of Jesus. So if the Bible says God is love, we have a right to doubt that statement until we verify it in Jesus. Is that true? When the Bible says God is all powerful, we have a right to say it's a lie until we verify it. So Jesus came as a verification system. So anything the Bible says God is that you did not see in Jesus, it was an error in the person who received it. And then, of course, the last way we know God is through experience. Job said, I have heard of you with the ears, but now my eyes see at thee. Well, that's not where I'm going to. I'm, I'm just showing you that um, scripture reveals certain things about God that we must know. The first information about God that the Bible tells us in unmistakable expressions is that God is love everyone please say after me god is love first john chapter 4 please and verse 8 apostle john is teaching us something about the nature of god god is love do we have that down the bible says he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love the bible does not say god have has love the bible does not just say god shows love but god is love psalms 145 please from verse 8 and 9 please write that down psalms 145 from verse 8 and 9 here's what it says the lord is gracious and full of compassion is that in your bible it says he is slow to anger and of great mercy this is a powerful information about god verse 9 the lord is good to how many now you please pay attention to all of this information because we will need them in understanding how mercy works number one remember that god is love now the bible is telling us that the lord is gracious he is compassionate he is slow to anger that's a good information slow to anger and then he says he is of great mercy. Verse 9. He says the Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over. This is a powerful information. That means everyone and everything is a potential recipient of God's mercy. If your life is void of God's mercy, it is not his inability to get that mercy to you. It is something about your not understanding how mercy is administered because the Bible says his tender mercies are over all his works. Are we still together? In Exodus chapter 34, Exodus chapter 34, let's read for time's sake from verse 5 and 6. Exodus 34, 5 and 6. 
the bible says and the lord descended in a cloud this was his encounter with moses and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the lord what was the proclamation the bible says and the lord passed by before him and proclaimed the lord the lord god merciful and gracious long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth this was god proclaiming his name and among the many names he said i am merciful it's not just what i do is who i am a name is a means of identification is that true so if i call you your name i'm identifying you but also a name can also uh, a name can be um a, a revelation about the things that you do for instance if i say doctor so 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 and so most likely that may be a medical personnel so already from your name i can know that you're a medical personnel and god is saying among the many things i want you to remember is that i am merciful i am gracious so three things immediately about god that we find from scripture number one god is love number two he is gracious and compassionate he's slow to anger and he's of great mercy and that his mercy is over all his works there are no biases this is powerful there are certain blessings in the bible that scripture is not um scripture would tell us clearly that he gave unto some have you read that in your bible for instance the administration of the ministerial gifts the fivefold as we call it the bible clearly says he gave on to some when it has to do with spiritual gifts apostle paul was teaching the church in corinth and he himself said do all speak with tongues do all prophesy but here the bible is telling us that when it has to do with mercy not just men his entire creation would have to live on the mercy of god that his mercy is over all his works now let's very quickly examine the nature and the character of man i'm just trying to rush because the main subject of mercy is what i want us to look at but these foundational thoughts are very important now we know and have been reminded again that god is love number two he is gracious he's compassionate he's slow to anger he's of great mercy and that his mercy is over all his works the nature of man some of you are already laughing there are very interesting things that the bible tells us about man that we need to know or be reminded of man there meaning all of us including the one teaching are we together yes there there is an intrinsic weakness and limitation that is enshrined in all men by reason of the fallen nature and if you do not understand that limitation you will not know why mercy is necessary are we together let me give you an instance if i ask you to sit down where you are seated now and i don't give you a reason or a revelation for it you see you will not have the staying power to comply with that instruction you will be wary and wonder why i am putting you in this kind of condition but if i tell you sit down here i have sent someone or there's some kind of fight outside and this place is your only place of safety no matter how tired you are that revelation will add strength and you'll be able to sit and remain there is that true hmm. the nature of man psalms 51 is a very disturbing psalm disturbing because um the psalm is there was pouring out his heart when you read the entire psalm 61 is actually a psalm of deep acknowledgement and repentance the psalmist was not singing a song here the psalmist was not doing poetry here it was a cry that was coming from the depth of the spirit of a man who was aware of his inadequacies intrinsically i wish we had the time to run through it but for sake of time we'll do verse one and stop to five are you ready 
have mercy upon me O God according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from my iniquity take note of that word and cleanse me from my sin please go back to verse 2 do you see immediately that there is a difference between iniquity and sin he says wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin let me tell you very quickly what they are related but they are not the same iniquity is a perpetual willful continual state of rebellion it's called iniquity perpetual continual willful state of rebellion sin in one word is disobedience people give all kinds of expression missing the mark transgression in one word sin is disobedience are we together yeah so if you are to interpret this in light of what i just told you it is safe and fair and even scriptural to interpret it this way wash me thoroughly from my rebellion and cleanse me from my disobedience next verse for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me verse 4 mm. against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest let's read verse 5 together please this is a sad news but it is true ready one to read behold i was shapen in iniquity and in sin this is a very powerful information about man the psalmist in in his state of repentance researched why this weakness that though he was royalty he was a great man but he kept finding out that in spite of his love for god there were limitations and encumbrances around his life he brought him to his knees and in his research he discovered that it was not just about what he was doing there was something intrinsic in his nature and here was his discovery i was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother in sin did my mother conceive me the nature of man the second thing we need to understand is in jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 are we still following in this place jeremiah 17 and verse 9 people of god let's read together if you see it projected ready one to read the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it it's a very serious question that the heart of any man is so deceptive it can deceive the owner too you are part of the you are part of the entities that your heart can deceive your heart can deceive others and it can go to the extent of deceiving you who can know it verse 10 i the lord i search the heart and i try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings that a man can be deceived by his own heart a man can be deceived by his own heart is someone learning now genesis chapter 6 please this is god's assessment of the falling man we've had prophets we've had broken people speak but now let's hear what god has to say about man we're reading the first five verses it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them reading to verse 5 that the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose verse 3 and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years verse four 
there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of god came in unto the daughters of men that they bear children to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown let's read verse 5 together one to read and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth don't forget who is speaking here and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was what only evil how long look at what god is saying about man this is a research god did himself and god is looking at man and it's almost an expression of regret what kind of an entity is this that the imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually the nature of god and now the nature of man you see what god is saying here that as wonderful as we look respectfully speaking as beautifully dressed as we are god is saying don't mind yourself because there is something there that is a lie number one there is a deceiver resident within you and you can become the, a victim of that deceiver yourself and that regardless how sincere how well intentioned how truthful we hope and seek to be he says the imaginations of the thoughts in our hearts are continually evil hmm. how else will you understand the subject of mercy if you do not study the nature of god and the nature of man now already you can see two contrasting realities god who is love god who is sinless gracious compassionate the bible says he is rich in love rich in mercy contrasted to the man who is the zenith of his creation in his fallen state look at the 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 various things that the bible has to say about man number one that it talks about the fact that in iniquity that means man's condition has nothing to do with his awareness and orientation that the problem starts right from conception that destruction and that disaster is not just resident within the heart or the brain or the will is gone spiritual it is within the blood of man so when you when you celebrate a little baby and everybody celebrates the innocence of that baby god's verdict is that there has been a transference of something into that baby that even the parents may not know every arm robber was once a baby every killer was once a baby did he come out of his mother's womb with a knife yes the knife was in his heart he only looked for it physically later on the bible says in iniquity that means the tendency for rebellion was already in me it was not outsourced it was already in me the circumstances that gave it visibility only were platforms for expression so a little baby who looks at the mother as innocent as that baby is he winds his tiny hand and slaps the mother and the mother cries and the baby laughs question who taught that baby that there is joy you can derive in the pain of another question two a baby is crying for milk and then he takes the milk and never says thank you just pushes everything because he's tired who taught the baby ingratitude the baby wakes up in the night and cries regardless he is not sympathetic to any condition i know we love children i love them too but we are examining something here that god is saying <laughs> no arm robber becomes an arm robber no failure becomes a failure no wicked man becomes a failure they only manifest something that is intrinsic within them that it is only the mercy of god 
the power of God, if the power of God does not administer something to that condition, he's saying any man who has not encountered the mercy of God, don't trust that person. You would have seen David as a young obedient shepherd boy you would never imagine that such a well-cultured obedient young man there was a murderer in that in that kind and quiet young man are we together yeah i wish i had the time i would have shown you a story between three people in scripture one was ben haddad the king of syria for bible students the other is hazael hazael was like a a, 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 a an aide who worked for him and then prophet elisha the bible says that ben haddad was sick is that true unto death and he sent hazael to go and inquire from elisha will i die or will i leave Hazael now goes to Elisha and says, my boss has sent me to inquire of you. And he said, let me tell you the truth. He is going to die. But I don't have the courage to tell him. So you go and tell him, oh king, you will leave. But the truth is God has shown me that he will die. Scene two. The prophet puts down his head and begins to weep profusely. And Hazael is looking at him and saying, why my lord? Why are you crying? And the prophet looks at Hazael and says i have seen the evil you will bring upon people he said you are going to reap pregnant women open and bring out their children and he said am i a dog it's in your bible hazael was saying no 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 no. I, I can't I, I don't have that kind of courage and the prophet said no i have seen it god has shown me you will be king and when you become king all this piety you are showing now and truly that was what happened the only way God helped his people was to kill Hazael so that he died. The heart of man. Most of the people who, has, who have brought pain to people today were some of the nicest, supposedly innocent people. Have you seen house helps who kill their bosses, poison people, and as at the time they came, they themselves did not know that tendency was in them. Don't forget what we are discussing. Mercy, remember? So the best of us, outside of the administration of God's mercy, is a disaster who time will reveal eventually. This is God's verdict. It's not an insult. It is the truth. So that little boy called David, now as a king the bible says at the time when men will go for war he was meandering across his balcony and then he saw is it in your bible he saw a beautiful woman and those days kings were like demigods no negotiation no nothing he said go and carry that woman and bring her whose wife is she they said the wife is this and that and that is a beautiful now when he found out she was pregnant he called the man to come back home and he said oh king what kind of order are you giving like this there's war going on there's no time for pleasure and eventually he signed his own dead warrant death warrant and oh dear look let me tell you by the time god is done with us eh you will not know when you've sat on the floor by yourself and just roll and say lord before my before this intrinsic disaster is revealed help me oh god you will now know that mercy is not just for sinners mercy is for all men there is a reason why i'm teaching you this because there is a theology that has been sold that every time you cry for mercy you are either a sinner maybe a fornicator a drunkard so we stand in self-righteousness believing i've been saved i don't need the mercy of god the Bible says it is because of that very mercy that we are not consumed. Are we learning? So, in conclusion, the nature of God is that His love, His kind, His great, contrasted to man. Man is evil intrinsically, and that He's so evil that His heart and His state can even deceive Him. That means you can actually believe you are all right and okay for many years. And you see, the way the evil in man works huh, is that until occasion allows it to be revealed, it will lie there quietly. So for 30 years, 
there is a tendency in you that will never be revealed people can say you are so humble question the person you are saying he's so humble has never been rich has never gone abroad has never been given an opportunity to be wicked you can't say you are obedient until you have an opportunity to disobey that's why there were two trees in eden the will is useless choices are useless until there are options is that true so there are many people who you are saying they are nice is simply because options have not been given listen we need to learn this is the reason why many families keep having pain over their children they wonder oh my child is nice under what condition and then respectfully speaking i'm not to get too emotional here i want to teach you the truth so that when it's time for mercy we'll say lord let it come and let it stay let your mercy not visit me let it find a resting place in my life the best of us is still inadequate we are various shades of disasters on our way to happen i assure you by god no matter how well intentioned no matter how sincere this has nothing to do with generating willpower to live right it is a weakness that the bible says it is in us in iniquity he said did my mother conceive me what then is mercy let's hurry up thank you jesus what then is mercy now that we understand the nature of god now that we understand the flaw that is in the nature of man what then is the mercy of god please write this down any action that is taken any action that is taken which is motivated by compassion is called mercy any action at all that you take whose motivation is compassion is called mercy any action this is the basic idea of mercy mercy stems from compassion that means it is impossible to have receive and administer mercy until compassion foreruns it the foundation of mercy is compassion are we together now if there is no compassion there cannot be mercy this is very powerful the foundation i wrote here or the basis for mercy is compassion what is compassion sympathy what is compassion pity what is compassion concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others i'll take it again i'm defining compassion sympathy pity concern for the sufferings or the misfortunes of others you can never experience mercy until you have compassion I define compassion as the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity does that sound like a scripture in the Bible that you've heard of for we do not have a high priest he says who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity compassion is the feeling mercy is the fruit that is generated from that feeling so when you are touched with the awareness of people's misfortunes and sufferings and inadequacies your response in honor to that compassion is called mercy mercy therefore is the fruit of compassion mercy is the fruit of compassion are we still together now let me define mercy there are three definitions i want to give us generally speaking and then i'll break it into two dimensions and we'll pray is god helping someone already tonight number one 
what is mercy compassionate treatment of those in distress this is the first definition the compassionate treatment of those in distress is called mercy compassionate treatment of those in distress number two the second definition of mercy means to show care and to provide relief to show care and to provide relief are you ready for the third definition the third definition is to refrain from harming or from punishing an offender the third definition of mercy is to refrain from harming or punishing an offender three definitions number one compassionate treatment of those in distress number two showing care and providing relief number three refraining from harming from harming or punishing an offender hallelujah by these definitions we come to two conclusions about the biblical nature of mercy number one that mercy has two expressions or two dimensions the first dimension has to do with forgiveness or withholding punishment please write it down I'm, I'm being very simple and methodical because i want us to understand before we pray the first dimension of mercy has to do with forgiveness and withholding punishment this is where sin has come this is where forgiveness from sin and so on and so forth forgiveness and withholding punishment the second dimension of mercy has to do with alleviating pain alleviating pain and providing relief from suffering alleviating pain and providing relief from suffering hallelujah alleviating pain and providing relief from suffering now please look up so i have shown you from scripture that when it has to do with mercy from a biblical standpoint there are two angles to it number one it has to do with what forgiveness and withholding punishment this has to do with defaulters this has to do with sinners the next angle has to do with alleviating pain and providing relief it has to do with those who are inadequate you can see that mercy is important for those who are defaulters and sinners and mercy is also important for those who are inadequate and incapacitated at any level this brings all of us into the equation as far as receiving mercy is concerned because you will always be one of these two either a defaulter or a sinner in need of pardon or one who is inadequate by reason of wearing a mortal body in any case you will still need mercy if god is speaking to us please say amen, amen. so the foundation and the basis for mercy is compassion and i said that mercy is the fruit of compassion now very quickly let's go to the third level how does god administer mercy i think this is the most important uh discussion here how does god administer mercy because you see most people just believe that because god is loving and man is a sinner and man is inadequate when i just say god show me mercy automatically mercy happens that's not true there are laws that govern the administration of mercy i wrote something down here that i want you to please write down before we begin to discuss the administration of mercy are you ready 
please write it down mercy is God's system of advantage mercy is God's system of advantage that guarantees that we become full expressions of his expectations regardless our humanity I'll take it again that mercy is God's system of advantage that guarantees or ensures that we become full expressions of his expectations regardless our humanity that means mercy is a system of advantage that God built to ensure that regardless how weak and frail we are that we still become full expressions of his expectation That means regardless the limitation that comes by reason of my humanity, by reason of my exhaustion, by reason of my inadequacy, it is still possible that I will rise to, to, to my full prophetic potential. No wonder he has helped some of us to be where we are because we understand that we are products of his mercy. Every time you see a human being producing certain levels of extraordinary uncommon results look beyond the skill look beyond human connections there is an amplifier because based on if we were to be assessed based on the true states of our limitation we will not add up to what we are now the mercy of god is a system of advantage someone shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. this is what god designed to make sure that no matter how frail I am, no matter how frail you are, that there is a provision in his economy where regardless our frailty, we still are able to rise to become all that he's designed us to be. No wonder Peter was able to still be that apostle, even though Peter ran away. Say mercy. No wonder Thomas, you know, most people talk a lot about Thomas. They call him doubting Thomas. Go and study Bible history and see the exploits that happened in the life of Thomas. Thomas was an exceptional, uncommon apostle. Yes, once upon a time, he was a doubter. But the latter end of his life was nothing short of a sign and a wonder. Is someone learning? Now, what does it take? To receive God's mercy now that we know the nature of God now that we have briefly looked at the nature of man and the reality of man's state that necessitates mercy and now we have the basic concept of mercy that on one hand mercy has to do with pardoning defaulters and sinners and then on the other hand mercy has to do with a provision of support for those who are inadequate I've studied my Bible and I found out that there is a condition God must find in a man otherwise mercy cannot reach you this is the high point of this teaching and I want you to please listen no matter how in need of mercy you are mercy will never come to you until God finds this one condition and that condition is found in Psalm 51, verse 17. Our Psalm again, 51, 17. Thank you, Jesus. The sacrifices of God, is it in your Bible? Are a broken spirit. It says, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise the one condition god must find in man and with man to be able to reach down to you with his mercy is brokenness please write it down just because the mercy of god is supernatural just because god is rich in mercy does not mean that you will be a recipient of that mercy he must find brokenness what is brokenness brokenness 
is a realization. Please write it down. Brokenness is a realization. And brokenness is an admittance. A realization and an acknowledgement of your limitations and your inadequacies outside of the assistance and the help of God. Brokenness is a realization. Brokenness is also an acknowledgement of your limitations and your inadequacies outside of the help of God. You are broken to the degree to which you, number one, realize, and number two, acknowledge that if God does not help me by myself and by my strength, I am inadequate. Please look up, believers. We have preached the subject of mercy in church and many people have even come out to be candidates of mercy. Unfortunately, very few have received mercy. I know it by assessing the results in their lives. Do you know why? Because although most people want the fruits and the blessings of mercy, most people have compromised through pride. They have not come to a state of brokenness. I can tell you one thing with God. As loving and as wonderful as God is. The moment you come to God full of yourself. Believing he's only an addition to what you already have. Forget about mercy. It is not Bible mercy you will get. The Bible says the sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite spirit. This was what I discovered in my study of the subject of mercy that broke me down. It broke me down in a way you cannot imagine. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Let's read together. It's projected. Ready? Please read. One to read. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken spirit. A broken heart and save it such as be of a did the bible say he saves all no no there is a kind of man that god is looking for to be a recipient of his mercy tonight if you truly want to receive the mercy of god just crying and rolling will not bring mercy you must assume this posture in the spirit that when the mercy of God comes upon individuals and families and businesses and ministries, it is not just searching for sound, it is searching for this spiritual state. Read your Bible in the New Testament. Every time people cried unto God for mercy, for instance, blind Bartimaeus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, what do I do for you that I may receive my sight? And he prayed for him. Brokenness. Many people have not gotten to this point in their lives where they realize and acknowledge the fact that they are inadequate. Do you know why? Because you see, please look up. There is a state of the fallen man for some reason man as a species is very very stubborn it takes a lot of defeat recycled again and again to bring us to our knees for instance the nation of israel god himself called them a stiff-necked people do you know what that means one who is not malleable proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7 it says trust in the lord with all your hearts and then it says lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him as what that's the question acknowledge him as what it is the reason why people of god you would see god reach down to individuals in their lowly estate and begin to lift them with his hand and his jealousy and put them in positions that looks unfair do you know why because what he was looking for he finally found in them whereas there can be other people who are even already privileged by default but that self-pride there are preachers today 
who have the they may have the backing of God but they have they, there is clearly no mercy in their lives when one plus one equals two in your life the mercy of God is not at work in your life because that is exactly what arithmetic says should be but when one plus one becomes an answer that only God writes the mercy of God has added to that result I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting very successful people successful in business successful in ministry successful career wise and as God grants me the privilege to sit with them and talk with them usually I would want to ask tell me your story and there are certain points lines in those stories I'm looking for I connect the beginning of their lives and I want to know at what point mercy came in some of those who were recipients of that mercy did not even know when mercy came in they only know when brokenness came they will tell you I got to a point where I lost I failed and I cried all through the night aha uh -huh. from that time they will say I found a message from that time they will say I went for a meeting they did not know that from that time it was mercy that took them please listen very careful you can know when you are on a flight of mercy the result will be clear I wish I had the time I would have shown you from Luke 15 from verse 11 the story of the prodigal son theologically speaking this is the greatest expression from uh, the standpoint of parables the greatest expression of God's mercy you know why because it's a very comprehensive parable it shows a family from the beginning the original plan then it shows the rebellion of a young man and it shows the consequences so it starts with a father that had two sons follow the story carefully and it says that the father was a blessed and benevolent man and provided the sons were under his care they were comfortable there was no mention of lack and limitation the bible says one day i'm rushing because of time one day the younger son met his father and said father i am tired of dependence on you you see the problem now i i have come to a point where i think i am smart and i am adult enough i do not need your influence in my life i am tired of giving you the glory behind the results that happened to me it's, it's, it's a thing of embarrassment before my friends give me something my portion of the inheritance and let me leave and the father said are you sure he said yes he said go from the time he came out of the influence of his father lack began notice the gradual degradation that happened to that child the bible says he went and met his friends and he began to spend the money on riotous living then the bible says in verse 14 that in the course of time he spent everything is it in your bible and he began to be in want i like the word began meaning it was not his prior experience he began to be in want and he kept going down and down and down until he got to a point where he was feeding with pigs please follow this in your imagination once royalty having access to everything because of one foolish decision that was a communication of rebellion and pride father i do not want your influence in my life i discovered that i am i think i'm an adult enough you see in the realm of the spirit you measure spiritual maturity by your degree of dependence in the physical realm the more matured an adult you are we know you are an adult by your detaching from authorities around your life reverse is the case in the realm of the spirit that the more dependent you are the more matured you are because you have now realized that outside of the help and the mercy of God I cannot amount to much this young boy would be learning a very painful 
and powerful lesson here's what the bible says that he got to a point where he came to himself please look for that scripture for us it is within the power of man to come to himself the bible never said the holy ghost spoke to him the bible never said a demon threatened him do you know let me tell you this please look up you may not believe me but hear this there is a dimension of pain that is a gift let me repeat it again there is a dimension of pain that is a gift pain can be an advisor pain can be a counselor so there are times that when you see people going through certain levels of pain you will want to help them but you see god will prohibit you because god will say i've been working with this man for two years i'm i'm now at the moment where their strength has failed allow this pain to culture them into brokenness and repentance don't try to help people god is not helping you may be destroying his program is someone learning very powerful lesson it had to take pain to bring this boy to his senses he came to himself the pride that came with the availability of resources did not allow him to have a, 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 a time of counseling to think what am I doing with my life but now pain had brought him to that point let's listen to his contemplations he came to himself and said how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger here's what he said next verse i will arise hallelujah something has happened to that gentleman i'm praying for you may this happen for you because there are many of you who have in reality taken god out of your life you replaced him with over dependence on intellect over dependence on business ideas over dependence on human connections i'm not saying those things are wrong but my bible already says trust in the lord with all your heart that is the reason why you see some people when you are clapping for them they roll on the floor because they know that there is a part of this equation you cannot see i will arise and i will go to my father and I will say unto him, listen carefully, hear the voice of brokenness. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Is someone following? And I am no more worthy to be called your son. This is not condemnation. This is revelation. His true state had now been revealed to him. He says, make me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father look at the miracle the bible says the gentleman said i will arise and i will go to my father he would have remained there and say it's just a blind thought he would have died there i assure you that hunger was already about to kill him he said i would die with hunger but the bible says indeed he arose notice this the moment he arose and started moving the father too left home and started coming he said draw nigh to me and i will i will not come and meet you in your rot and your situation there you cannot help yourself but acknowledge the fact that you are limited the moment you satisfy the condition of brokenness you are ready for mercy listen do you know why i'm teaching you this many of us here are leaders you must also find this in the people you show mercy to forgiveness is useless until there is brokenness and repentance anybody who is in need of mercy the role that he has to play in receiving that mercy is to be broken first to realize and to acknowledge when you help people who are not broken you endorse their pride when you help people who are not broken you accelerate their journey to perdition and destruction are we together it is the reason why when we make altar calls sometimes we ask people to come out we is not to embarrass them leaving your seat and defying the shame leaving your colleagues and your loved ones and coming to stand there is a token is an expression of your brokenness 
Are we together? Unfortunately, these days, there are people who come and stand here and still are not saved. When you look at them, you don't see brokenness. They are even still standing and recording the preacher. All they want is just a, a photo of his, of his picture. While a powerful prayer of salvation is going on. Lord Jesus and the person is just recording. But the only thing he says in that prayer is amen. You are not saved, sir. No, sir. Except scripture will be broken. The Bible says if you will confess with your heart. Are we Bible students? The Lord Jesus. And believe, confess with your mouth. And believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead. He says then you are saved. Broken. Now, let's see what happened. The Bible says he arose and he came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had... You see our formula again. What was the first thing the father had? I told you mercy is the fruit of compassion. You cannot have and show mercy until it, there is first compassion. Pity. This young man is limited. He is frail. And the Bible says, he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. 21. Very interesting verse. And the son truly said what he said he would say. If the son did not say this, if verse 21 was not in that scripture, we will know he's a hypocrite. He said he was going to say it. And when he met his father, he truly said it. Father. I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called your son. Next verse. But the father said to his servants, look at the father. This describes the character of God. The moment the father found brokenness, there was no discussion of the issue again. It was over. This is the, I, I want to show you how mercy works now. There is no point discussing the issue what i am looking for i have found ah hallelujah 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 do you know why i'm saying this because you see men will not forget your past men will not forget your yesterday even when you have become paul they will keep reminding you of when you were saul jesus died i agree but how long did he die he only died for three days when he was now resurrected they were still talking about the dead jesus like many people will still be talking about your 10 years ago they will say rahab the great grandmother of jesus is it the rahab i used to know but the prodigal son's father showed us the character of god the moment he finds brokenness the end of discussion to that limitation no more discussion he would have said what a stupid boy you are so this is what you have become you could not even leave anything at least the man with one talent even brought back the talent what you didn't bring back anything and then they will beg him and beg him and later he say all right mm -mm, that's not god remember the lord is gracious and compassionate that's why i started by showing you the nature of god listen if you do not understand the nature of god you cannot express that character of god to those who are under you because you see the end of this discussion i'll leave that for tomorrow the moment you receive mercy you must one day be in the position of this father too every one of us in this story will be both the father and the son are, are you getting my discussion some of you for now you are like the son you need to come back but for some of you as leaders you are that father there are people who are long overdue for mercy they have been broken that case has to be over hmm. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! The face of development.
Lord, grant me the discipline 